Hannah Sherman. I teach Lit 115 at the Larimer campus, and I've been part of the scope development project for critical thinking with the Lit classes here. Basically what I did is I just decided uh, I'm going to break this down. I'm going to make it very manageable for students. So it, it was not hard for me to implement, I want to say. It felt very natural um, to create homework assignments that basically gave students the opportunity to practice with the critical thinking elements of the assessment. So I built in eight to ten homework assignments that related to this assessment. I used the language of the assessment. I basically gave them the exact same prompt, but I tailored it to new stories or to poems, to the plays that we read. And so they were practicing it once every couple of weeks throughout the semester. And they were hearing the language. They, we were just, I don't think it was foreign to them at all when they came time to actually practice then an exam. it did not take much effort. I mean, no more than creating new homework assignments or okay. anything like that. Uh, like I said, I, I set up homework assignments. So I sort of knew every couple of weeks I want to have them doing something that relates to this. So they're getting started early on in the semester, mm -hmm. thinking that everything we do is working towards this final assessment. And I see that as a very positive thing. of my struggles as an instructor is finding the language that will stick with students and resonate with students. So one of the advantages of the assessment is it gives us a common language not only as instructors but then we can use that language with our students and if nothing else we can fall back on that language all the time. If we've set up here's what we mean by critical thinking, here's what we mean by analysis, now we're using one word to really hone in on a goal rather than Again, for me, I think I spent a lot of semesters going, well, we're analyzing and, you know, any number of synonyms for analysis that students were like, well, wait, is this the same as analysis? Is it different? Mm -hmm. So now I have a concrete toolbox of words and, mm -hmm. and language, and it's like we're all speaking the same language mm -hmm. rather than speaking <laughs> different dialects and ending up confused in that. made it so that I really see how to break it down for students, that there are these really concrete steps that we can give to students in terms of how do we talk about a piece of literature, how do we talk academically about it, how do we share our responses with other people, and how does that create more value in the discussion. And so uh, it makes it more, yeah, more tangible and more accessible, I think, to everybody. And I like the idea of I mean, like I said, we want students analyzing, we want them interpreting, we want them inferring. And so if I can show them those different elements as I teach each story, then I think they feel more empowered mm -hmm. as students to think, to go, wow, I really can do this. And, and it's not as daunting, whereas some students come in going, I hate reading, I don't want to talk about short stories, poetry, are you kidding me? You know, and so it's, it's made me feel... Like critical thinking is a very natural human skill. We just need to access it. And this assessment helps us give our students access in a very, um, I don't want to say basic, but real tangible way. They are latching onto that language. So I think that's a good first step. You know, they're, when they turn in those homework assignments or in the first few weeks or even the whole first unit, they're looking at the language that I've used in the prompt and they're being very deliberate about using that language themselves. So that's the first step. And by the time we get through the second unit, now they have taken that language and they've actually expanded on it. And they're saying, okay, well, what I mean by this is mm -hmm. I get to see their progression in a more real way in a more holistic way because I can see oh they went from just using the language to elaborating on what that language means to finally giving me a whole sense of why this is all important and how it's significant. So I've, I've found myself using the language from the lit assessment in terms of how do we talk about critical thinking in a lit class and trying to also bring that language into the composition class because it's not that different. I mean, when you practice the skills of analysis and interpretation in a composition course, you're doing the same thing. 
maybe your end goal is a little bit different or you're using it in a different context, but the reality is those skills are entirely transferable. And so I find that my students who take my lit class first and then go to comp, they're going, oh yeah, I get this, I did this already, you know, and vice versa. Now that I've been able to bring that into my composition class, I feel like my students are going, oh, this isn't unfamiliar territory for me if they then go into my lit class mm-hmm. later on. And so that common language, I think, extends beyond the lit department to anywhere else that we're talking about critical thinking. Mm-hmm. We all are talking about the same set of skills, and we hope the students will get the same thing out of that mm-hmm. process, essentially. And that's really fun to see because you use critical thinking in everything, but if we can make them aware of it and make them own it, then I think it, it's, it is more empowering for them. Initially, I'm of the mindset that you hear the word assessment and you go, oh, that's a horrible thing. I mean, you hear it in public schools and it becomes this just burden that public school teachers are carrying. And so I think when the idea was presented initially, I definitely went, oh, assessment, we're going to all have to grade on the same scale. We're going to have to do the same things. And I I did have that reservation initially. Uh, But as as I've gone through the process and now that I'm doing it with the students, it gives me more of a... A clear way of diagnosing said what are students struggling with so rather than me looking at them and going why can't you talk about this why are why aren't we getting deeper into this material I'm able to pinpoint oh well they're not inferring which maybe that seems ridiculous maybe I should have been able to identify that before and yet I feel like just in in terms of how has it empowered me I have some specific things that I can go oh we're not analyzing we're missing that piece and I see that in their writing in particular so sometimes it's hard to diagnose that in a quick classroom discussion but when I sit down and I read their homework assessments that are their practice they're very low stakes I can identify okay so three quarters of the students can infer really well they're doing a great job finding passages but the analysis is missing or they aren't connecting this to the larger picture so now I can go back in and say let's talk about this let's talk about what's going really well right now but let's see if we can get a little further so then we have the chance to talk as a group they get to share their what they've already written as students and what they've already processed individually and now we can go so much deeper And it actually gave me a more tangible way of assessing them throughout the semester rather than just in a multiple choice exam, which I really appreciated. Uh, I felt like we were being much more productive in our discussions. And so time-wise, thought-wise, once we had that assessment in place, I felt like it was very, very natural. collaboration has been huge too you know I think the opportunity to work with my colleagues and just bounce ideas off of them because it's so easy to get stuck working in a bubble you know you get busy with grading in all of your other classes and stuff but the opportunity to meet with the group occasionally and even doing the norming that we did and say how would you grade this and why we came at it slightly differently but I think we again we all have the same goals in mind and so you learn a lot from the ability to interact with each other over the assessment as well. Mm-hmm. So, I think my favorite example, and I probably should experiment with this a little bit, but I've always started with fiction and then moved to poetry and then to drama. And so this semester in particular, I had a group of students who were avid readers outside the classroom. So initially when I started introducing this language and trying to push them to think critically rather than just talk without boundaries, you know, talk without those sort of corralling ideas, they were a little bit resistant. They had their pushback. They're like, why can't we just talk about the story? And I said, we can, but if we really want to get deeper, that's why we want to use this language. That's why we want to use these tools. And they, they floundered and struggled and resisted a little bit through that first unit, but they still followed along a little bit and made some efforts. Um, then we get to poetry, and I feel like students, most of the time, go, poetry, ugh, it's awful, I hate it, you know? Uh, but I have found, at least the last two semesters where I've done this assessment, using the assessment in the poetry unit changes students' perspectives. I mean... I would say by the end, I have 
85% of the students, if not more, who are like, wow, poetry is really cool. It's really great because having those boundaries, having those guidelines gives them a way of accessing poetry where otherwise they would just go, I, I don't know what to do with this. But now I can say, let's look at these lines in under the umbrella of these critical thinking terms, under the, the goal of let's connect passages, let's connect stanzas, and they're like, oh, I see what we're doing here. I didn't like it in the fiction unit, but now I see the purpose that this structure has for poetry. So then by the time we go through drama and get to that final assessment, I think I've really convinced them that this is a worthwhile structure to work within, and they appreciate it because it grounds them. So absolutely. It's, it's reinforced that literature is accessible to everyone. I mean, I think I wanted to believe that always, but it's, it's made me even more aware of, I mean, for example, I was always someone who looked at theme in literature, and that was my focal point, why, how is the theme developed? But it's given me a chance to explore structure in more depth. How does an author put structure, or how does an author use structure to, to, to develop a meaning or to develop a theme? And so it's, it's made things more concrete for me. And, and like I said, maybe an even better example is, is poetry. You know, I think sometimes I even struggle through poems, or and we still do, you know, there's still those poems out there that you never truly figure out, potentially. So, But I, I do think that it's, it's given me, it's helped me rein in my thinking about literature. And, and I've appreciated some of those boundaries. Um, and I've appreciated getting even further in depth with things as a result of having the assessment to, to use with my students, so. I would say that I see a lot of value in working with the scopes. Like I said, I think if you're part of a team where everyone else is doing it, there's so many opportunities for collaboration. There's so many opportunities to bounce ideas off of someone else who's doing or who's attempting to do the same thing that you are, and that can be very beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, we always want to be learning and growing as instructors. We want to be improving and presenting information to the best of our abilities, and I think the scope just gives us a chance to step back and really evaluate how am I presenting the material in the classroom, and sometimes that's unnerving initially because you want, I think a lot of us felt like, well, we already do this, you know, so why are we, why do we have to have a scope to tell us that we do this? Yeah. But we do already do this, so that means that implementing it is not that big of a deal. It's it's pretty natural to implement it into the classroom, so I think that's a bonus. Um, but it, again, it also just gives you a more intentional way of implementing it. You know, it's, it's easy to go, well, I teach critical thinking. I want my students to learn critical thinking. But if we have more intention, if we have more purpose, and if we can communicate that clearly to students, I think their buy-in is a lot greater and they're a lot more likely to be successful. And so I think that probably would be the biggest thing that I would want to share with someone who'd never worked in a scope, that it can shape your teaching for the better and it can shape your classroom in a lot of really positive ways because of that new sense of awareness, new sense of intention. And, and not just going through the motions. You know, we get so caught up and we're busy as teachers and we have grading and planning and other classes that we're trying to keep up with. So having a really concrete thing to go back and say, okay, wait, am I using the language with my students? Am I presenting this based on something that we can all look at together and agree upon as instructors and students makes a, makes a big difference. I will say it's been sort of fun to read evaluations or I give end of the semester reflections and whether my students are buttering me up or not I have no idea but I have seen because of these and even if it's just buzzwords that I'm using or this language that I'm emphasizing all semester long I'm getting a lot of students who are going I really learned to think critically and sometimes they're saying that I mean it's a 115 class so I may have a student for their first time in college ever but they're coming in and they're going, I've learned what it means to think critically for the first time. And so that as an instructor, you're like, yes, I have accomplished something. I've done my job. So